I know what's about to happen. In fact, what's about to happen ends up right here where I am sitting in a place we call Root Canal. I think I can make that. To give you guys context, Outback Motor Tech gave us a brand new Ducati Desert X. Now we're not that familiar with adventure bikes. We're coming from a dirt bike background. But we do have a reputation for being bike wreckers. That goes back a long way. And Outback Motor Techs knows that. What they do is they, they make armor, if you don't know, they make armor for adventure bikes. And they do the infamous drop test where they basically dress up a brand new sexy motorcycle and then push it over in a parking lot. And uh, everyone cringes and freaks out. They want us, bike wreckers, to take this brand new Ducati Desert X and take it on a dirt bike. The Desert X Rider is a expert level racer in the Pacific Northwest Enduro Series. Uh, Mitch is the stud in the pink outfit. Hey, I'm Mitch, and I'm a stud. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's riding the Ducati Desert X. He is an expert podium guy. Like He's not always on the podium, but he is a podium contender in this expert class. To do like 50 log jumps in a row. We're doing like hard enduro stuff. Plus we have to go 100 kilometers an hour through single trip. Yeah, like you got a GNCC with a hard enduro for three plus hours. And how long have you been riding motorcycles? Give me that. Uh, since 2019, so it's about five years. Is that the first time you've swung a leg over a motorcycle in 2019? The first time I owned my own, own bike was 2019. My boss had an old XR600 that he was selling for a thousand bucks. And I had enough money and I bought that. And I rode it not one time. I told my friends they were stupid and I hated this and I don't know how you do this for fun, and I sold it. I think about riders in, in two kind of classifications, like where they are in like race standings and then on a scale from gentle to aggressive. And like I say, Mitch is like a top five expert racer. And then he's aggressive. Uh, he rides at a fast pace and he revs like hard. He's just like on the rev limiter all the time. He hits things really hard. He just lays a beating on the motorcycle. Fast racers will be anywhere on that spectrum of gentle to aggressive. You can have top expert or like pro rider that's smooth and doesn't waste energy and likes softer setup suspension and is really easy on the bike. And then you can have people that are that same speed or definitely slower that are very aggressive. So those two things are almost not related. Well, I can't even, uh, I put it on the uh, odometer or something. You know, for chrono, so you put setting menu mm -hmm. and then you hold this mm -hmm. two seconds. Yeah. And you can, yeah. We struggled to figure this all out. As enduro riders, we just ain't that smart. Chuck Carter is um, been with the E-Rake forever. Uh, he's a mechanic extraordinaire. And Chuck races in the intermediate class, and I think he's like a top 15 guy. So Pacific Northwest, British Columbia Mountains, pre-technical terrain, and that's what these those two guys are. Are you breaking that right now? No, I'm fixing it. <laughs> well, you didn't get 20K on this thing and you broke it. Yeah. It's just poorly made. Yeah. It keeps falling over. <laughs> the Ducati needed new tires, so the owner wanted us to add the straight pipe and remove the baffle while it was on the bench. Jesus, that is one bulbous piece of equipment. 
What is that, a catalytic converter? A scrotum. <laughs> it looks like a scrotum. <laughs> you fire it up without the can on it? Oh my god, I'm putting huge protection in if we do that. Faccia di culo. It doesn't fit. Of course, we gotta use the Italian speed wrench. Oh, that makes perfect sense. sound to it holy deep deeper than i expected man oh man the ducati had clapped out tires on it when we received it we immediately changed them to moto z tractionators freshies and uh we knew that the bike would need those to handle the dirt ride come on you spruzza preti she won't come The final person uh, that we decided to take along was a young man named Mason. Mason's 14. I didn't even know how old he was until I asked him and when he said 14, I laughed in his face. <laughs> I just, these bananas are older than that young man. Anyway, 14, he's new to dirt bikes. He rode dirt bikes around his farm as a kid. Just outstanding young man. And uh, I think everyone watching will agree that this is how young men should be raised. <laughs> so if one is this bike being returned in mint condition, and then 10 being, we're gonna return it to the owner in boxes. Probably like a, like a six. A flat tire, a lot more scratches, maybe dents, handlebars bent, maybe a chain snap. At this point, nobody knows what's gonna happen. I love this part. We're taking this motorcycle on a trail ride, and you know where we're going. Yeah. How do you think it's gonna do? Like, there's gonna be some technical stuff up there, but like, I'll make it through. Yeah. The first thing I wanted to do, my thoughts, if so I know how capable a bike is, how well I can control it with the throttle and my body position. So if I can get a good wheelie and like a good stoppy and stuff going, like, it, it may seem like playing around to the normal guy, but like, that's like, you have that finesse over your motorcycle. Anything I ride, whether it's uh, CRF 80 or a 450, right? I want to ride it the best I can. I find the most fun in going as fast as you can in whatever you're riding. Yeah. <laughs> what, are your, what are your expectations? Uh, well, the suspension is definitely the weak point. Mitch is going to just bottom the merda. all the time. Uh, I rode it a little bit yesterday after putting the new tires on it, and like I can immediately get the wheel off the ground. Oh, right. So, I think uh, I think it's going to be very rideable. How do you think that motorcycle is going to do on this stuff that we're going to ride today? Compared to a dirt bike? Yeah. So yeah, a real dirt bike. Mitch is a very competent rider, so he's going to he's going to make it do whatever we need him to make it do. Uh, but he's just going to expend a lot more energy doing it. There. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's go time. <laughs> We sent them to a grass track so they could just warm up and get a feel of things.
Once the boys were warmed up on the grass track, we decided to head into the woods and find some hill climbs. My legs are starting to chafe. Because it's so Rompi coglioni. wide. Who put the dent in the tank? Chuck took us to McCaskill Hill. This is one of Chuck's favorites and he cleaned it from the very first attempt. McCaskill Hill is scary steep and it takes 60 seconds to climb. This is one long ass hill. Back at the bottom of the hill, Chuck gave Mitch a few tips before he took the Ducati up. So when you get close to the top, there's a way to, to the left and to the right. The way to the left has a pretty steep rock face, uh, and to the right is uh, it's just like a like a smooth ride up. But it's uh, I mean it's a long figlio di buona donna. Hill. It's whiskey throttle it and ghoster. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the first and last time we ever film one of these videos. <laughs> <laughs> At our adventure bike clinics, we teach how to pick up a 500 pound adventure bike. And it's clear that Mitch has not attended that class. gives this long, brutal hill another try. Porca puttana. That was rough. <laughs> hey, Mitch. No, I will not do that again. Hey, Mitch, uh, take, take Chuck Honda down. And we'll have you ride the Honda just to show the difference. easy on that on this though it's it's a tough hill like it's all loose and rompi coglioni at the bottom so rompi coglioni but, yeah. now it's mason's turn so if you're gonna not make it then uh ditch a little early and just ditch off to the right okay It was great to see Mason with such a positive attitude. He picked the bike right back up, went down, 
and immediately had another attempt. Oh, shit! Yes, young blood! Yes, young blood! The RX almost feels like a two stroke. Like, it's very loud, it's very um, zippy. It feels like it would just go off anything with ease. I heard you whacking the throttle on and on. <laughs> like, what makes you want to do that with the RX? Um, like, what is it about that motorcycle and that engine? It's just so powerful, and it, I, don't know, I just really like the sound. I suspect when you're riding the RX, you were smiling in your helmet. Is that true? Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Next is one of our love-hate trails. It's painful and unpleasant. It's called Root Canal. I can make that. Non dire cazzate. Three feet is really deep. than you though. Sure are showing me the full dirt bike experience. I love adventure bikes. So all that chaos and carnage, that's called root canal. I wanna give my impressions about the motorcycle first. The Ducati Desert X, I had super, super low expectations because 
it feels like it weighs a ton and it does weigh a ton. When you first throw your leg over a bike like that, it feels like, oh man, this is just a street bike. But then when Mitch took this bike through some of this dirt bike terrain, that's difficult for dirt bikers. The Ducati Desert X exceeded my expectations in a big way, like in a super big way. It's all about the rider. I don't know if you're gonna be doing what Mitch was doing. Mitch is uh, 6'3", 6'4", and uh, slim, and he's young, and he's fit, and he's fast. But the motorcycle itself isn't necessary the limitation. Like, it's, it's spectacular. We had so much fun with it. What are you doing the bike? It's pretty good. At this point, we're in Root Canal. We're in the shit. merda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely in the shit. merda. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's honestly, like, it's pretty good. Like, for a big bike. Thing is, like, we made it through. There's snow, there's creek crossings, there's rocks, there's a million logs, and they're all wet and icy and roots everywhere. And if you have the skill and the, the willpower, you can make it through. Good traction and like, you can take like down a logging road, which I, I, I'm assuming most people are gonna ride these things on. Like it, it feels controlled and solid. Like it feels great other than you start going fast and pushing it a bit. Right, you start fishtailing corners and getting getting all spicy, and you hit a hit a, a bump the wrong way, like you're gonna bottom out, and it's gonna jar you. Or if like you you punch a log, right, you're gonna bottom out the forks and the rear shock. And I couldn't imagine it with bags on it, panniers or something on there. The the rear shock's gonna be a big limiting factor. Even like going down the logging road, if you hit a big wash, water's gone across the road, you're gonna bottom it out more than likely, front and back, and that's pretty scary. We're, we're gonna establish Root Canal as like the test bed yeah. for, for <laughs> yeah. adventure. Yeah, yeah. For adventure bikes, this is where you don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. We asked you to do something pretty ridiculous. Yeah, like maybe getting stuck at the end of a creek that's like up to your knees, being stuck on roots and your bike's Cazzo. 90 degrees to the way you want it to be. Let's talk about the experience. Would you do it again? I would do 95% of it again. Yeah, I, I don't like I don't like getting wet. <laughs> maybe maybe no water. Maybe no uh, dirty creeks. And but are your feet wet? My feet aren't wet. No. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> was it fun or was it suffering? It's a pretty hard trail. Like it's very tight and like, logs everywhere and trees. I thought I was gonna go off the edge at the very start because there's like a big drop and it's a hard turn. And then I got very wet in the creek. I stalled in it, so it's a little bit harder than what I've seen before. Is Root Canal the toughest trail you've ever been on? Uh, yeah, I think so. Great. Right. So today was like the pinnacle, like the toughest thing. Yeah, on a new bike too. <laughs> right, right. You did play well. Like the thing with adventure bikes is you want to be able to cover ground and you want to be able to go on adventures, right? Uh, and sometimes that takes you in areas that are less than ideal for the motorcycle. So an adventure bike can go on the road comfortably and it can do this if you ask it to. I feel like more so with adventure than any other type of bike, the key that unlocks the ability to do this is putting the correct guards on it. Like if we didn't have those guards, like the bike would be destroyed. Now that we've been through this and you've seen how many times this thing's hit the ground and been dragged by its front wheel down gravel and... Oh yeah. It's like... That bike would be destroyed. It's a street motorcycle with 10 and a half inches of suspension travel. Right, right. Because Once you put guards on it, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Off the top of your head, I know you haven't seen it on the bench. What, what's happened to that bike so far? Uh, one of the guards has a dent in it. Um, there's, a, there's like a little crack in the paint. I don't know if, if we broke a weld or whether it's just that they flexed enough for the powder coating to, to crack. Um, I mean, the thing is, the whole thing is totally intact and I don't, it doesn't look to me like it's bent at all, which is, you know, that 500 pound motorcycle, like what, what we just did, what Mitch just did, like launch the thing into the air and like drop it down right on the skid plate. Uh, uh, it looks to me like everything's intact. I think the bike wants to go home. Yeah, yeah, it's Do the YouTube thing, hit like, hit subscribe. What bike would you like to see next? Throw it in the comments and we'll take a look.